Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the party. It's me, your girl, Britt Reacts. And today we are reacting to Bill Burr, Flat Earth. Let us see what he has to say. Flat Earther wanted to reach out. Oh, I love it. I love it. You know, here we go. Right here into it. Go. Let's get into this. Come on. Convince me. <laughs> hey, Billy Beta Boy. <laughs> I'm a beta boy now. Oh, okay. And you're the alpha. Okay. I see you're constantly discussing the flat earth phenomenon. I'm not constantly discussing it. You are. <laughs> I'm just making fun of it. Fat people think I'm con constantly talking about them, or I have been lately. <laughs> um, can I ask you a question? Do you think fat people are around, or do you think they're flat too? <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> he thought that was so funny. Ah, <laughs> uh, sorry. It was too easy. Um, and he I wanted was to so reach out. For the by record, that. I am not a scientist or mathlete. Yeah, I could have, you know, you didn't need for the record. I could have fucking told you that. I have, however, read tons of literature and nonfiction books about the discussion. A nonfiction book was written about this, what, for the fucking 1200s? I am reaching out to see you to see if you are actually interested in hearing from a genuine critical thinker on the topic. I have a PowerPoint that has been a in PowerPoint. the works for some time and would be doing a video about it uh, to start up. No, I'm not reading this. I literally was just about to say, Bill is not going to have anything to do with this. Like nothing. I, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't think I've heard Bill certainly not speak on and on about the topic maybe he's mentioned it like i feel like in a conan interview he mentioned like conan asked him something about it um but i don't think i yeah i don't know i also don't know i mean obviously i know there are people out there who believe the theory that the earth is flat but that's really to the extent of it i don't know like all the inner workings i know it's like very polarizing and can be like people are very passionate about it if they feel that way uh, but you're not going to convince Bill Burr to read and or watch your PowerPoint. I'm so sorry, sir. Like, he's very serious, it seems like, from the tone of this email. And it's just like, I think you reached out to the wrong podcast, maybe. Maybe. Go about it. Uh, to start up. No, I'm not reading this. I'm not, I'm not going to fucking read your PowerPoint fucking discussion what I want you to, t I just want you fucking flat earthers to tell me what, why would they tell you it's round when it's flat? What is the advantage? I get, I get a lot of conspiracy. <clears throat> I get people when they say I'm worried about the vaccine. What if this is what they're using for population control? I, I, that makes that paranoid thought 100% makes fucking sense considering what governments have done to forget about other people, their own fucking people. What, what, what this government has done to people who aren't fucking white. I, I 100% get that paranoia. Okay? Because I see the fucking, the reason that they're doing it and the advantage of, of them doing that, taking out all of these fucking people, so they can live. These people all fucking die. And then this global warming shit slows down. There's more room for them, more property and all that fuck shit. I totally get that shit. But I just don't get like. If it was flat. Right. Why would you tell me it's fucking round? Yeah, I, I definitely get Bill's point here. It's like. He just doesn't see what anyone could benefit from telling people that the earth is flat when it's actually round. Like who wins in that? What, what is the point of that mistruth if it is the truth? Uh, but he, you know, he used the example. I understand, you know, he may not agree with people who say like, cause I think Bill has openly said he got the vaccine. <clears throat> but I think what he's saying is like, I understand people's, thoughts about how this could be this he understands the the logic behind that conspiracy he doesn't understand the logic behind the the earth is flat conspiracy i i and to that i agree like the point there is like 
he just wants somebody to make it make sense for him. And it seems like thus far, no one has been able to make the Earth is Flat conspiracy make sense for Bill. And that's fair. Because the reality is, I don't care. That's also Bill. <laughs> as long as gravity still works and I don't float away from the fucking planet, I don't give a shit. <laughs> but this fucking crap here where people are trying to say that there is a fucking ice wall like somebody <laughs> would have seen it and taken video of it. <laughs> ice wall. Like you could hear that he turned away to yell. <laughs> somebody would have seen it and taken video of it. Oh, why was why that so is funny? there no video of the fucking ice wall? Why isn't there anything out there where there's people standing, looking over, going, look at this. If I take a step here, I'm going to fall all the way down off the earth. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Just show me that. I'm not reading a bunch of fucking books. But if you want to read books on this, this is to start off with the moon is within the Earth's atmosphere. Okay. Even if we went to the moon, it's still not in outer space. Oh, my God. Sir, could you get a pilot's license and then please tell me that you still believe this shit? Um, flat Earth as a concept is not old. Okay. Is not old? Yeah, no. My whole life, everybody thought it was fucking round. Till the internet came around. Uh, it is actually new. Okay. Oh, you're saying back in the day, Columbo. Okay, the book below basically discusses how it was an invention to discredit evolutionary critics. I feel like I'm listening very hard because I really want to understand. Like, this seems like, to me, it's such a foreign concept because I don't know anyone in my life that believes the earth is flat. Um, I've never encountered anyone who believes it. So I'm, like, very interested in this this man's information because like bill said it's like okay i just want someone to simply prove it to me i understand the theories but where is the proof like we have seen footage from outer space looking down onto the earth and it does quite literally seem like it's a sphere so where's the proof i've never heard about this ice wall and all i can think of is game of thrones and <laughs> Uh, the people who live on the other side of the wall. Like, that's all I can think about when we're talking about an ice wall. How it was an invention to discredit <laughs> evolutionary critics. From the time of the Greeks onward, anyone was aware of the shape. Everyone was aware of the shape of the earth. And yes, the, the meme that Columbus was the only one who thought the earth was round is entirely inaccurate. Uh, yeah, I would believe that. I believe that. Yeah, I believe that there was plenty of smart people that fucking figured that out. Mathematically. <laughs> Mathematically, they figured it out. Are you going to tell me now that right. the sun goes around the fucking earth? Um, okay. I, I don't I don't know what to tell you here, buddy. Okay. Uh, I'm sure you're aware of the origin. You know, I also feel like people, will, like he said, like you talk about it a lot and it's like, no, I don't think Bill talks about it a lot. I think you guys bring the subject up to him and then he very passionately tells you how he feels about it. And then everybody's like, oh, you talk about the earth being flat. And it's like, no, y'all brought it up. And I'm not, this is my podcast. You wrote into me. I'm not, not going to discuss it. <laughs> and he very much so discusses it in the way he discusses everything with like annoyance and passion. He discusses everything this way. So to be like, he's so passionate about it. It's like, no, he kind of talks about like, the last episode I listened to, he was talking about not shopping at the Goodwill in vintage stores because he thinks it's dirty. And it was in the same tone as this. So I like everybody calm down. <laughs> Y'all are not being excluded and like bullied by him. This is how he speaks. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you here, buddy. OK. Uh, I'm sure you're aware of the origins of NASA being that America took in war criminals an organization we should be skeptical of at the very least. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. But, like, the thing about it is, is then every single fucking country, our allies, our enemies, every fucking leader, all of them, all the scientists all got on the same page for this fucking lie. They can't get on the same page about, about anything. anything. Nothing. 
We can't even get on the same page about what to do or what not to do with this fucking virus. Right. But you're telling me all of these world leaders who constantly fight each other, constantly make up shit, constantly steal from each other, constantly try to wipe each other out. The one place where they all agree to lie about is that the world's round. That's what the fuck you tell me. It's a great argument, Bill. Um, Great argument. Like I said before, I am not in and in, not intelligent in a standard sense. Well, neither am I. Okay, but I'm smart <laughs> enough to listen to, to other. I don't know. Whatever. I don't think when when people say stuff like that, I'm like, you could have left that out because you're really discrediting yourself in any way. Like I'm not smart in the traditional sense. It's like, yeah, now I don't want to hear anything you have to say. Like when people do stuff like that, I just think you really take yourself out of the running to be heard. <laughs> You could not say that, and I'd probably be more inclined to listen to you if you left that out. You know? I'm not that smart, book smart, but, like, so, what kind of smart are you? Theoretically smart? Like, what kind of smart are you? Standard sense. Well, neither am I, okay? But I'm smart enough to listen to, to other, I don't know, whatever. I have been told I'm more wise than smart. I'm not a Christian. I am college educated, currently serving in the California Army National Guard. Well, that's great. Have somebody take you up in a fucking plane. Uh, Thanks and go fuck yourself with knowledge. Yeah, buddy, I'm, I'm not wasting my time with that. I am not wasting my fucking time with that until somebody... Can one okay? Look, here's the deal. I will read that shit if you can tell me what the advantage of is telling a meathead like me that it is fucking round when it's actually flat. Yeah, I love that he's like a meathead like me. He's like, I don't need all the details and the specifics. I need a very simple answer to why and who would benefit from telling us that. He's like, I'm a meathead, bro. I'm also not that smart. I just have one simple question. And it doesn't seem like anyone's been able to answer it for him, which is why people keep coming at him about it. Because he seems like he's willing to be swayed and turn the other way if he's given the information he's looking for. But he hasn't. And so he doesn't. You know? You can tell me what the advantage of is telling a meathead like me that it is fucking round when it's actually flat. Actually... (laughs) Fuck all of that. (laughs) There is video about everything. Everybody has a fucking camera with them right now. Send me video of somebody standing on the fucking ice wall. Okay? At the edge of the fucking... All of these fucking people that have pilot's licenses and have boats and all of this shit, somehow they've never gone out and seen it. I mean, the news outlets travel to wherever the news is. Like, I was watching on CNN last week. One of the guys was literally in, I can't remember where he was, but he was getting ready to get on a boat to go to Antarctica to report on how the ice is melting there at, like, rapid rates. You mean to tell me we can't get to this ice wall? You mean to tell me we can't get... To, I mean, they're literally flying into war zones and all kinds of things. We can't get to the ice wall? We can't get photos of the ice wall? I don't know. I'm with Bill. You got to make it make sense for me. Two plus two is not equal in four here. The math is not mathing in this one. Y'all have to make it make sense. And have boats and all of this shit. Somehow they've never gone out and seen it. And posted it on their fucking YouTube page. Send a like, drone. Hey, man, I don't want to freak people out. But, like, I was sailing around the world and got a little lost, and I ran into a fucking wall right in the middle of the <laughs> right. ocean. And then I climbed up on it. I mean, what the fuck? Right. All right. Anyway. Not to mention, I flew around the world one time in a plane. So the pilots must have been in on it, right? Really, Bill? Like, just do you did that? subtle... <laughs> Or is I that a joke? From, was that a joke? I flew from L.A. to Australia. Oh, yeah. Back to New Zealand, up to Singapore, Hong Kong, Mumbai, then Dubai, then New York City, and then to L.A. Was this a tour? Did he travel like this for a tour? That's insane. Wow. Hong, Mumbai, then Dubai, then New York City, and then to L.A. Okay. I did that. 
And if you're going to sit there and tell me that this guy was doing all these twisties and turnies and all of that type of shit, that essentially, that every, you, I, I can't get into it. <laughs> I mean, dude, there's a fucking reason why when they fly to Europe, they fly north first before they head over the fucking ocean. Mm-hmm. 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 It's because mm-hmm. it's round. And up top there, it's a shorter distance, and they save money on fuel. Hmm. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> or, or is the map that I'm watching on the plane also lying to me? Oh. Which would mean all of these fucking people know that it's really fucking flat, and for whatever reason... Yeah, like pilots. Everyone's just bought into this. That we're, they're, they're taught to lie to us in, in pilot school. That's true. The flight tracker, I do watch the flight tracker whenever I'm on a plane. I'm like, well, how close are we? It's round. Bill is making some heavy hitting points here that I don't know how someone could argue. I would love for him to have this conversation like on the podcast with someone who believes and has uh, like they are informed on the theory of the earth is flat because Bill has really good common questions like they're not super scientific or, you know, they, they don't need super educated answers. It's very plain, very plain. Very plain, and I appreciate that. All of these fucking people know that it's really fucking flat, and for whatever reason, they're all lying to people like me. And for what? <laughs> I actually think you're just doing this just to fuck with me, just to watch me get worked up. Yeah. <laughs> I will go along with a lot of fucking conspiracy theory, but I, I, I just can't with that one. I can't. <clears throat> I can't do it. All right, censorship. Uh, Dear Billy Bubble Boy, I work for a small magazine, and in the last few years, the amount of censorship I've seen is incredible. Yeah, I don't doubt that. And I'm an older lady, and I've been writing for lifestyle and arts for 40 years. Every day now, I see some form of silencing or ostracizing over opinions. Yeah, and I bet it's coming from the left. Benign ones, too. Yeah, from the left and from corporate lawyers who are trying to preemptively anticipate how these lefties are going to get fucking, these se- severe lefties are going to get offended. Uh, the diversity of ideas is almost dead. Our pitch meetings wow. used to have really independent ideas. I assumed there would be a reversal, but instead it's, it has become more vigilant. It's coming. Mm. It's coming. It's adjusted. It'll adjust back, and then I'll be in the middle again. Uh, I'm not speaking about controversial topics. For example, a piece on a newly discovered art form uh, art from a particular part of the world was pitched to the editors, but because the region of the world the art came from is associated with taboo opinions, it could inadvertently upset a reader. Yeah, this is be- inadvertently upset a reader, I think is a mouthful right there. It's like Everyone is so concerned nowadays with what could happen, what might happen. Everyone's like thinking of all the ways that things could pan out instead of just like sticking to the truth. You know what I mean? I don't know. I think in a in a publication, it seems like she's like a lifestyle publication. It doesn't seem like they're like a tabloid kind of thing. It's like... If they are reporting on something or doing some journalism on something, it would be pretty factual. But because people could be inadvertently upset by it, they kill the story. It's so crazy to think about. You know, people just look to be offended these days. Look, literally are like looking for things to upset them so they can react. It's crazy inadvertently upset a reader yeah this is because of people on the left the extreme people on the left this is what they did to critical thinking free ideas and all of that and they think that they are liberal and they're not they are fucking they're dictators Mm. Um, it reminds me of a society the society my father grew up in in eastern europe all opinions published and taught in schools were subjected to a collective idea, always disguised as what's good for the people. 
Do you well, see a reversal in that's this? That's scary. Would appreciate your insight. Yes, I do. And what it's going to take is people going out of your way to say exactly what the fuck you're thinking. Um, I've been trying to do that with my stand-up act just to just... Just, I really have to work on pushing out because there was like a three-year period where I kind of gave into that. Oh, I don't say that. Uh, maybe some of you, if I say that, am I going to get in trouble? And I, I started like, you know, alligator arming some shit. And then last summer I did the Chappelle um, uh, retreat there out in Ohio and there were no phones or anything. And I was like, holy fuck, this is the way it used to be. Yeah. And I could say whatever I wanted. And I was, and I realized that because of these fucking lefty ass Phones, not phones. Social media really did it. Social media did a number on this planet. And people's... Just ideas about things and how... Everyone feels like their opinion is the right opinion. And it's just the weirdest thing. It's so weird. I mean, even here on this channel, sometimes I read comments and I'm like. I don't know if people feel like it's helpful to give their opinion or they just feel like they want to get it out or they feel like. I don't know. I don't know. But it is always so confusing to me because I'm just like, <clears throat> at the core of my being, I'm always going to try to be the best human I can be. And sometimes that requires me to be quiet. It's that simple. Like sometimes I don't have anything nice to say. And so I be, I be quiet. I be quiet. <laughs> I choose to not say anything. And it's odd to me that people don't operate like that. Like they're like, oh, no. I don't have something nice to say and you need to hear about it. It's odd to me. Because it just feels like what are your intentions? What what is what is at the end of the day your goal? What do you want to leave people with? Is it your negativity? Is it your scrutiny? Is it your judgment? Because I don't want to leave people feeling that way. Um, and the same is to be said about like my my opinions. I don't ever want to push that on anybody. I'm fine to share them. But like I just this world has gotten so crazy because of social media, it fueled and gave everyone a platform to say whatever they wanted. And that's scary. Whatever I wanted. And I was and I realized that because of these fucking lefty assholes, I had been censoring myself on stage and I should not have done that. And um, so I think there needs to be an awakening. Because I think a lot of people are doing what what your the place you, where you work at are actually doing it themselves. Mm. Um, a lot of advice I get from my reps is don't do that. It's not worth it. Don't you know? Uh, don't say this. Don't do a, a project about this. Don't stick up for this comic that's getting shit on. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not. Worth it. It's not I, I've pretty much ignored that. For the most part, those ones when people are getting canceled, there's that thing where the, it's like you want to support, but then you also don't want to keep it going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're kind of hoping it's one of those three day things and then nobody gives a fuck and they've moved on to something else. It's really a fucking shameful period. Um, yeah, and it really is like damned if you do, damned if you don't. Right. It really is. That's that's an interesting perspective that obviously not everyone has because you're a lot like he's on a celebrity level where what he has to say could be um, impactful. <sighs> Anytime I sneeze, I tell y'all to leave a sneeze emoji in the comments. So do that for me. If you just saw me sneeze, <laughs> um, I don't edit my videos. These are one take. So you're going to get the sneeze and I hope you leave me an emoji and say, God bless you. Um, but yeah, I think that's an interesting take about what, like how he just said that it's like, Sometimes it's like, do I say something or do I just let it go away? Because if I say something, is it going to make it worse? Hmm. I just think if everyone was just coming from a place of goodness, it would help. Like goodness. You can say how you feel, but is the intention behind it goodness? If it's not goodness, then chances are it's not going to um, birth anything good either. 
right? Like I think a lot of times people are like, well, I'm just giving my opinion. It's like, fine. But is your opinion going to give any value or benefit or goodness? Or is it just going to spew more ugliness? You know, I don't know. That's just my opinion. You can literally say whatever you want, in my opinion. Um, Because everyone has their opinion. I just like sometimes for me, I struggle with like intention because I don't think everyone's intentions are good. That's obvious, right? We obviously live in a world where everyone doesn't have good intentions. Duh. (laughs) Moved on to something else. It's really a fucking shameful period. Um, um, Much like the Red Scare. And and just when, when this all is said and done and people look back on it, the amount of like really decent people who just didn't do anything wrong, who had their careers taken from them, um, you know, it's just fucking... I don't know. It's just human beings. We're awful. Um, Okay, here we go. Why I don't care about being obese. All right. Dear Bill. Okay. I don't listen to your podcast a lot. Mostly just YouTube clips. Bill makes me feel like it's okay to like have a sip here because he does it. And this is a 31 minute video, you guys. So I'm going to sip my sweet tea with lemon. I hope that's okay with you because Bill makes me feel like it's okay. It's interesting that he's he bought up obese people at the beginning and the obesity and the earth is flat talk because he's like, I don't talk about it a lot. Y'all just bring it to me. And here's another example of someone writing him about it. So now he's going to talk about it. But that doesn't mean he's focused on it. You ask him a question, he's going to answer it. I think that's interesting. I don't listen to your podcast a lot. Mostly just YouTube clips and your specials on Netflix. Uh, while on YouTube the other day, I came across Bill Maher's opinion on fat shaming, which led to this rabbit hole of different celebrities sharing their opinion on obesity. Then I remembered you. Are you calling me a celebrity? Thank you. Right. Nice. Uh, on your special, <laughs> talking about how plus size models wanted to be treated as beautiful or fatties, as you call them. I'm morbidly obese, and I agree. These people are not beautiful, and I doubt the vast majority of the general populace think that they are beautiful unless you have a BBW kink. I don't know what that is. Having said that, I, being a fatty, am impervious to fat shaming. I know I am ugly. Okay, we share that. I know I'm ugly. Bill! Too, all right? And fat, and no one would want to touch me. Oh the my thing is, gosh. I don't. First of all, Bill Burr is not ugly. I actually think this is like one of the, I on this special in particular, I was like, he looks so handsome to me. Like the bald head with the red beard, the full red beard with the denim shirt. It's like, he is not an ugly guy. Um, It just breaks my heart that people feel this way about themselves. Like, I think everyone has an esteem issue some way or another about themselves. I don't, I don't think there's a single person on this planet who doesn't feel they would like want at least one thing different about their self, their appearance or whatever. But when people like are so, uh, that just, it just breaks my heart to know that whoever this person is, is so matter of fact about that. And it's like, I don't, I don't, I just hate that. I hate it. I'm sorry. I'm like a softie to stuff like that. I hate it. And fat and no one would want to touch me. The thing is, I don't care. Okay. Okay. Well, you care on some level because you're writing me. Uh, This is not to say that I allow being fat to overly interfere in other people's lives. I normally buy a business class seat because they are bigger and I won't make the person next to me feel squished. If I can't fit in the car with my friends, I'll hire a cab or an Uber, which takes me along with them to wherever we want to go. I know being fat is curable. The thing is, is I don't want to cure it. You just gonna, <laughs> that's fucking. This guy's like the punk rock fat guy. Um, that was like I mean, this guy I know who's been just boozing his face off forever, and he's never tried to quit. Uh, there's something I don't know. There's something I envy about that. <laughs> um, anyway, and if someone tries to shame me rather than persuade me to cure it, it just irritates me. At one point, I literally recreated. The $100 to fuck off meme. I don't know what that is. 
Let me explain why I don't care or why other fat people might not. For me, food is an addiction. Not only fast food like McDonald's or Burger King, even gourmet food like Karalala lobster, I don't know what that is, or Shikora Kara. Uh, this addiction combined with the high stress environment of the education system here leads to a lot of stress eating. Um, eating helps me cope with the pressure associated with exams here. Mm. Eating also, yeah, but dude, you can, and cigar smoking, help me keep, take the edge off the day and drinking. You know, I, um, one of my favorite shows is my 600 pound life. I like, I don't know why I, I'm a documentary, docu-series kind of girl. So really anything that documents people's lives, I find highly interesting but my hundred, my 600 pound life is like my go to show. If ever I am sitting down to watch TV, I will see if there's a new episode on because it just fascinates me. Um, the people's journey. I think it's such a journey of just like human temptation and human will. And um, for a long time, I did not believe when the, at every single person on the episode on the show will say they'll either admit that they have a food addiction or they will come to terms with the fact that they have a food addiction. I always be like, what? Like, how are you? Addic-? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Just put it down. But the more you watch the show and everyone has some type of trauma that they dealt with and they learned at a very young age to turn to food as comfort. And everyone's story is different, obviously, but they all kind of say the same. Like I turned to food as comfort as a child or post this traumatic situation and the food was comforting. And, you know, I mean, a lot of people turn to food. A lot of people stress eat. A lot of people, you know, whenever they're stressed, they like will admittedly eat food and snacks that are not healthy for them but they don't happen to be obese. And so I like, it just was like, for me, I had to like come to terms with like, oh no, because like, even when I like am about, you know, PMSing or something, I'll eat junk food and eat poorly. And it's like, but I'm not predisposed to obesity and I'm not eating that much, but like, I do that too. I turn to food for comfort. So it's like, no, you have to believe that part of it. I do think there is an addiction to food. I do think it is a hard addiction to overcome just like any other addiction. Um, and it's real. And it took me a long time to like believe it. I had to watch like seasons on seasons on seasons to really start to be like, oh, dang. Wow. Just because I don't understand it, you know, it's the same as like a drug addiction. I will never have that. But it doesn't mean it's not true. Well, we never say never, but I've never dealt with that. I've never dealt with someone close to me dealing with that. So it doesn't feel real to me, but I don't discredit it as not true. Stepping off my soapbox. Yeah, but dude, you can, cigar smoking, help me keep, take the edge off the day and drinking, did all of that. You can pick, you can (laughs) choose something different, dude. Don't kill yourself. You want him to drink instead? You're going to kill yourself. Um, Eating also is both a, you, you know what it is? I, try, I kind of figured out why I abused alcohol, edibles, cigars, and shit like that. I figured out. I was like, I figured out because I wasn't happy mm-hmm. with myself. Mm-hmm. And I had all of this pain from fucking years and years and years ago that I never dealt with. Mm-hmm. And when I would start to feel these feelings, rather than allowing myself to feel them, figure out what they were, talk to them about somebody, cry it out of you, whatever you had to do. I would just booze my face off and yell and get in arguments with complete strangers about a fucking Minnesota Twins versus Red Sox game 40 years earlier, something fucking stupid like that. So, you know, I don't know. You're not asking for advice, so I won't give you any, but I I hope that, you know. Yeah. At some point, you know. You turn it around. All right. Eating also is both a literal and figurative escape for me. Eating can be figurative escape because it allows me to cope. As said earlier, literally, I'm hoping I get a heart attack and no one finds me till it's too late. And I figure at this point, you're asking yourself, well, why don't you use a razor blade or a noose? Oh, my To be completely God. honest, I'm a shit-eating coward. <laughs> I'm both scared of death and kind of welcome it. Dude, I swear to you have no idea how how alike you are with me 
Uh, I'm too scared to plug in the toaster and drop in the bath, yet when my heart gives out, I'm not going to cry out for help. I'm just going to lay on the floor, close my eyes, and be at peace. Wow, dude. Uh, you kind of scared me. Here I don't want you to do any of this shit to you, but I'm also, it's freaking me out how much I relate to everything you just wrote. Until then, I'm going to study for my law exam and work a few odd jobs, and just because, just because I am scared? What? Till then, I'm going to study for my law exam and work a few odd jobs just because I'm scared. All this is not to say that your jokes are not good. They're fucking awesome. Honestly, I kind of don't understand why people would get offended at a joke unless it was really egregious. You and a few other people online are what's making my life slightly less bearable. Uh, keep making the same jokes you always make and never give a fuck about what other people think. Best wishes. Yeah, dude, you got to you got to fucking figure out why you're doing that to yourself. And why you don't care. That's heartbreaking. I'm sorry. I don't care what I just that is heartbreaking to hear. Oh my gosh, bless his soul. You know? That fucking shit, dude, that you just wrote there, which I think a lot of people relate to, mm -hmm. where you know, I don't kill myself because I'm too afraid to do it. But like, you know, death does <laughs> seem like a fucking like, ah, it's over. You know what I mean? I totally 100 um, percent relate to that. But mm. uh, I don't know. Hey, man, you like to eat, right? Why don't you eat some mushrooms? Maybe you'll have the same fucking results that I did, which is I, I realized how much loneliness, sadness, and depression was in me for so long, and I actually figured out where it came from. Wow. And On now shrooms? I'm in therapy, and I'm trying to figure that out. And because of that, since the end of February, I haven't done any damage to myself. Um, wow. Other than fucking, you know, some milkshakes or whatever. But fucking, I've, tr I've tried to, like, figure out why it is I was doing to myself what I was doing. Um, which is, I think, you know, whatever it is, boozing, overeating, whatever the fuck it is. If you can figure out the why, then you can try to fix that. And then I think shit, it's easier to kind of like level stuff out. I think, but you're also talking about someone who's only for two months has I'm new to this shit, so I agree, Bill. I think I think you're spot on, Billy. Um, I mean, even on the show that I was talking about that I watch, they always recommend people go to psychotherapy because the root is not food. <laughs> like food is not the problem. Food is the coping mechanism. It's like, so what are you trying to cope with? That is the problem. And I think that is the same to be said for any kind of addiction. But yeah, I think Bill is spot on here. And I think. Um, you know, I think it's sad that Bill even feels like he can relate with that guy. Like he just doesn't seem to have much sense of worth for his life. And that is heartbreaking for anyone to live that way. Oh, guys, we have to focus in on ourselves and make sure we're okay. Check on your people. But you're also talking about somebody who's only for two months has I'm new to this shit. So anyway, I hope you turn around if you want to turn it around. But um, all right, that's it. Okay. You seem like a cool guy. All right. Girlfriend thinks I'm gay. Dear old Billy Bonkers. I just feel like I keep getting like hit in the face with a high speed baseball. <laughs> like with these topics and titles like this is too much. I have a situation that is kind of hilarious and kind of fucked up. So I thought this might be the perfect place oh my for gosh. advice. Insert 30 seconds of silence while you fumble to get your theme song. Oh, <laughs> you're right. Let me see here. <laughs> is this it right here? It's time for advice. Hey. Your host, Billy Burke. That's me. And I'm ripping off this melody from somebody else. Okay, here we go. I've never heard uh, that. That is my first time hearing that. Oh, my gosh. Let's see here. Oh, wait. Now, does it go into the next fucking thing here? No, it doesn't. All right, cool. All right. Um, my, girlfriend and I, my girlfriend and I have been together for about three and a half years, and I 
truly am in love with this girl. She checks all of the boxes and then some. And then some. Super smart, beautiful, funny, amazing family, and she loves me. I absolutely see a future with this girl. I'm 25. She's 23. So I know we're, so I know we're young, but I've been told I'm very mature for my age, and she's getting there. Okay. Um, no, there's nothing wrong with getting married that young. Then you can have kids when you're young and fucking see most of their lives before you kick it. Um, unlike me, the fucking super old dad here. Now, for some context, before I jump into the situation, in middle school and high school, I had been bullied by some kids saying I was gay. I've always taken pride in how I dress, how I look, my hair, and I would definitely describe myself as metrosexual. I was also very tall and skinny growing up, and I had poor posture. Oh, that's it right there, dude. Tall, skinny, poor posture? Yeah, you're going to get fucked with... It's the fucking laws of the jungle, unfortunately. Anyway, so the little fucks had a lot of ammunition, and I honestly don't blame them for it, but I'm not gay. Uh, As you can imagine, it fucked with me and killed my confidence. Yeah, dude, you're talking about someone who grew up. All this confidence talk. I, too, grew up gangly and, like, shaped like a 12-year-old boy, literally, until I got to college. And then I kind of started to, like get a woman figure a little bit. I'm still just naturally a thin girl. I will always be, I'm on the taller side. And um, I too was teased a ton. I'm also bow leg and uh, bow legged, bow legged. And uh, caught it really bad when I got to high school. All the boys used to call me parentheses legs, you guys. And it was like, I went to high school with my cousin who we grew up like siblings and he's one year above me. And it was all his friends on the basketball team. They were awful to me. And they'd be like, you're going to be so hot when you get older, but like, not now. I was like, (laughs) okay. (laughs) And all my friends, I hung out with all the girls who like developed super early. So they had like va, 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 boom bodies in like the seventh grade, like all my friends. And I was like, just a little boop that hung out in the group. Like just boop. Who's that little boop? Like she has a cute face, but like what's going on with the rest of her? (laughs) You can imagine it fucked with me and killed my confidence. Yeah, dude, you're talking about someone who grew up with orange hair. <laughs> I can't believe it's people like, make fun of people with red so- hair. I am always, I don't care what color your skin is. If you have red hair, to me, you are, you are the most beautiful, most handsome thing. It, like, blows my mind that people make fun of people with red hair. Like, is it a jealousy thing? What is that rooted in? Because have you seen these people? Like, I don't, I don't understand it. I'm like, I wish, I, 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 when I was pregnant with my daughter, I was like, God, please let her come out with red hair. (laughs) She did not, but I just, that bothers me when people say that. Grew up with orange hair. (laughs) So yeah, I know what it's like to have a target on your back. Um, In college, I decided I was going to put on some muscle. Really difficult. I have the metabolism of a hummingbird. (laughs) We got a great sense of humor though. He does. So that, that makes up for a lot of it. And do something about one part of me that I have always been self-conscious about. I gained 20 pounds and am now proudly 6'2", 170 pounds. I do well with the ladies. (laughs) And I've had a few girlfriends. Yeah, 6'2", 172 is like solid. That's that's solid right there. He's given like athlete, like, er, yeah. I do well with the ladies. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I've had a few girlfriends over the years, uh, none as long as this one. I have no resentment for being bullied when I was younger. In fact, it served its purpose as motivation for me to better to be a better version of myself. Um, I think about bullying all the time. I think wish I could go back and, and, and stop a lot of it that I saw. Um, I was that weird. I was like a, a, in the middle of the pack. I got bullied. I bullied people. You know, get yeah. it off of me and put it onto somebody else. I really wish I had, mat- you know, you wish you had the maturity now of back then. And some of the stuff I think about, I still think about some of the shit that I saw some kids go through. I was just like, fuck. Brutal. Um, in the first year of dating my girlfriend, I opened up to her about getting bullied. And she told and told her that's why the gym became so important to me. She was supportive and felt bad that I went through that when I was young. But she also wanted me to confirm with her that I wasn't gay. Her asking me frustrated me. Yeah, that's fucking weird. Yeah, what? It was easy, and I chalked it up to her not knowing me well enough yet. I was pretty adamant about my answer and thought she got the point. In our second year of dating, she somehow brings it up again and says, are you sure you aren't gay? 
Like you aren't going to marry me, have a family, and then come out, right? Whoa. And this time around, the question pissed me off. She does not seem mature at all. Like the man told you he was bullied in high school because of the way he looked and people called him gay because he liked to take care of himself, which, yes, I don't know how old this man is, but that sounds very like normal. Like boys, guys didn't take care of themselves and care about their appearance in high school. So that does sound like he would be called out for that. But for him to share that with her and for her to do that just seems like she's not mature. She doesn't seem mature. I mean, I guess I can understand it cause a question for her. Like, why would people say that if it's not true? But it's like, girl, he just gave you a solid example and reason why. Yeah, she just doesn't seem mature. I mean, he said she's 20, what, 22, 23? She's still in high school, basically. <laughs> Whoa. And this time around, the question pissed me off. We had this conversation earlier. Really. I've been with you for two years. We fuck weekly, and it's great. I'm also getting insulted. Weekly. No offense at all towards gay people, but my girlfriend is asking these questions based on certain stereotypes, and I don't think there are enough evidence, air quote evidence, for her to be suspicious. I probably overreacted a bit. No, you didn't. Mm -mm. But it hit a nerve that my own girlfriend is bringing up feelings I had when I was bullied in middle school. Uh, got to be the end of it, right? Well, we're three and a half years in, and tonight she pops the question yet again. Dude, break up with this chick. Yeah, she's nuts. She words it similarly to how she worded it the second time, and I got pretty heated. I basically said, we've had this conversation now three times. I've told you each time that I'm not gay. And she's the type of girl to be like, well, why are you getting so upset then? Like, if you weren't, then why are you getting so upset? And it's like, you are making this man literally defend his sexuality in a situation that he told you was like sensitive because he was bullied about it early on in life of course he's gonna get worked up why three years in you're questioning i can't yeah she's gotta go she's trash she's trash basically said we've had this conversation now three times i've told you each time that i'm not gay nor have i ever questioned it it pisses me off that after th more than three years you're still asking me this question this is not normal i don't think most women in relationship ask their men yearly if they're secretly gay and going to leave them so i'm insulted she of course then becomes the victim because mm -hmm. i didn't react how she wanted me to mm -hmm. i said i'm sorry but this is not okay the next time you ask me that question I I better have a dick in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong here? No, mm -mm. not at all. Mm -mm. Is dressing well, being neat, and keeping myself well-groomed really that much of a red flag that my girlfriend should be questioning my sexuality? I don't even talk like the stereotype. She should go find a guy who doesn't do those things then. If she's so concerned about his upkeep, which is wild then go find a man that wears sweatpants and, and ripped up shirts everywhere he goes. Like, what do you want? She sounds like she doesn't know what she wants. And maybe she's not comfortable in herself or her sexuality. I don't know what that is, but basura. Put her in the trash can. <laughs> Flag that my girlfriend should be questioning my sexuality. I don't even talk like the stereotypical gay dude. Um, any suggestions for how I can get her to believe slash not ask me the question anymore can't wait to hear whatever you say go fuck yourself um yeah i would break up with this chick 100 percent. she's gotta go she's got some growing or i know this is what i would find out what the fucking be like okay did your dad marry your mom and yeah. then after you were born she's got a trauma where is her trauma? Be like okay did your dad marry your mom and then after you were born come out and say he was gay like what is this fear or what the fuck is it that i'm doing that makes you keep asking me this question uh, that's what i would ask her mm -hmm. and if you don't like the answer i would fucking hit the road jack mm -hmm. and don't you come back no more no, cause that's really fucked up mm -hmm. now granted i haven't heard her fucking version of shit um <laughs> it's funny if she fucking wrote him um yeah, I'd have to hear what her concerns are to ha have any fucking idea. But if you're telling me the truth, which how the hell do I know? But if you're telling me the fucking truth, you're not gay and you just dress well. And I feel like she also maybe went and told like a friend about this and the friends are giving her a hard time. So she feels like she has to continue to bring it up. There's something going on with her, though, for sure. And fucking whatever. And she's just asking you that. 
I mean, you might be, are you an effeminate straight guy? Because they have those too, you, you know. I don't fucking know. I don't know. I have no fucking idea. So I do think that it is fucked up that you have expressed. I'll tell you, you know what else I think is fucked up? That you've stayed with this person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're saying she's mm-hmm. checked off all the boxes. I, like, how many boxes is she checking off that once a year she can ask you legitimately if you're gay or not and you still want to be with her? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of questions I have here. Mm-hmm. Me too. Because <laughs> I, I think, I mean, if, I mean, I, I would just. I'm on board with Bill. One time, maybe. I think you can ask somebody that once. And then a year later, they do it again. It's like, all right, I'm leaving you before I get like a fucking complex here. That and the fact that like if she's questioning that and you're saying you want to you see a future with her. I don't think she sees a future with you. Not if she has to question you annually. I don't know if she feels the way you feel about her. Right. Like, Jesus, I'm fucking got me sitting here watching John Wayne movies now trying to fucking be extra (laughs) manly here. So you stop asking me that fucking question. I don't know. Mm-mm. I have no idea, but um, Mm-mm. 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 I don't think she's convinced. I don't and you're three mi- and a half years in, you're 25, you got your whole life ahead of you. Um, I don't think she's the one, bro. I don't know this person, but I can tell you this. Reading your email and just hearing your side of it, this woman is not checking off a lot of boxes for me personally. <laughs> um <laughs> So, I don't know. Is it like her fucking weird way of trying? She doesn't want to yeah, break like, up with you. Yeah, so just, yeah. Just doing this thing that annoys you. Yeah. I don't know. I, yeah. I don't. This is that's a weird one. Some fucking heavy emails this fucking week. Jesus Christ. My thoughts exactly. I'm kill myself, but I'm fucking welcoming death or whatever the hell that was, and then this shit and fucking the Earth is flat. All it. Fucking all of Stalin it. Stalin chick running an HOA. <laughs> Jesus Christ! When, when the fuck did this podcast become? So Wait, is this also the HOA episode with the with the boulder that I guess got edited out? Maybe. Oh, if that was also in here, I don't know how Bill made it through. Mm-mm. So so deep, man. Um, all right, that is the podcast, everybody. Um. So I'll I'll leave you with this because what that what that guy was talking about the guy eating too much, you know. Um, that really bothered me. Mm-hmm. I don't, I, I hate people being, as much as a douche as I am, I don't like people being in pain. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I uh, do know, Bill. I know. Someone who's been in a lot of pain for a lot of his life and now figuring out that, you know, you know, your natural reaction is to fucking go away from pain, distract yourself from pain, bury your pain and all that. And it's just, it's just, it's still going to be there. Which is why the next night you're still going to want to drink just as much, if not more, or eat just as much, not as more. Uh, go fuck somebody you shouldn't fuck, whatever your fucking addiction is. Um, but it's kind of amazing when you stop just for a couple of months and really try to work on whatever that fucking thing is that's bothering you, how much progress you can make mm. um, quickly especially if you're talking to somebody that understands what you're going through. So I wish that for all of you. Yeah. Because if you don't deal with that pain, not only are you going to hurt yourself, you're going to hurt the people around you that you love. All right. That's the only public service announcement I've ever made in this podcast. So with that, go fuck yourself. Well, that was a long one, but I, for the most part, agreed with Bill. Um, this was a heavy episode, heavy, t- heavy podcast episode. And I think some of it was edited out, which is crazy. Uh, all right, y'all. I can't wait to see what you have to say in the comments. Listen, I have a Patreon. It's launched. It is linked in the comments or sorry, not the comments, the description box of this video and the description box of my channel. There are a lot of fun things going on. There's already a behind the scene vlogs of the day that I filmed content with Mr. L. Boyd and another reaction video that has never been seen. Uh, Tons of things coming, more behind the scenes footage, a concert series where I just go to concerts and take you with me. Merch is on the way and Patreon members get first dibs at pre-order and discounts. So if you're interested, head to the link in the description and I will see you in the next video. Have the day you deserve. Peace.